This video is being sponsored by Educative.io, which has a collection of well-written crafted courses for software developers. Thanks to Educative.io for arranging a special discount by using the link in the description below. Hey everyone, this is me, Rachit, and welcome to yet another video. I have seen a lot of software developers who have been using Terminal, but they are not really productive when it comes to, you know, writing commands and using Terminal the right way. I have extensively researched about different types of terminals, different types of plugins, and I've captured the best essence of all the products that I've tried so far. And in this video, I want to share a few of my learnings and tips and tricks when it comes to terminal productivity. I'm sure that this video will be super helpful. For example, I know that a lot of people when it comes to, you know, writing long commands on terminal. And let's see quickly. So, so this is really a huge command, right? And when you when you have to write such huge commands for terminal, it's really difficult, right? I, I'll just zoom in on the screen to make it a bit more bigger. I hope it's better. So when it comes to writing such huge statements, you know, and then going, making some change over here. So it's really difficult, right? Like if I have to uh, change this cake cookie over here, it's really difficult for me to, you know, go navigate over there slowly, slowly. What I do is I press Control X E and bam, here we are. Now I can simply have a Vim window I can go to cake. Here are cake cookies. Um, this is the one that I want to change. So I can change it however I want. Right. So I can make it anything like if I want to make it um, rake cookie, something like that. So it's really easy for me to, you know, now play around. I want to delete lines. I want to basically change what I have over here, something. So it's really easy, handy for me now to write longer commands. In fact, when you're writing for loops, for example, it's quite handy. Once you are done, you can simply, you know, press enter and bam, here is your updated command and it gives us the response over here. So this is really handy. It also modifies the command. For example, if just to make sure that it's working, for example, if I have to do something like LSDIR and I want to make this, let's say their name or something. So I'm writing random statements, just I'm giving you a demo that it works. So as I'm saying, whatever changes you make in the Vim window, once you exit that, they are reflected in the screen. And obviously this command does not make sense. There is no directory, but yeah. So I want to share such tips. And if you feel that this is useful, make sure to you know hit the subscribe button, like this video. Um, this channel has been extensively covering about coding interviews as well as software engineering. So make sure to you know hang around and watch other videos as well. Again, I have a lot of terminal tips. If you feel that you are interested in more such tips, make sure that you comment in the video below. And if we get a really great response, I will probably, you know, compile another video with more such tricks. So to begin with, I'm currently using iTerminal. So this is iTerminal in Mac OS. It's really cool. Um, just to give you a brief demo of what are the different things that you can do with it. If I press command D, you know, it opens or splits my screen into two. So I have this window and this window. I can work with them. If I feel that this window is really small and I want more space, I can press command shift and enter. So this maximizes the current pane that you are in and coming back, it's again command shift enter. So it's toggling between the full screen mode and so on. If I want to split it, uh, make a like division in the other axis, I can press command shift D and it splits it like this for like making a cut in a vertical direction. Command D is the command that you need. And again, you can, you know, work on different areas, write anything over here. And then if you want to work in this window, command shift enter and it maximizes. So it's really cool. And uh, a lot of people are using Tmux, which is again, um, really cool. It helps you a lot in uh, doing such stuff. But I generally use Tmux when it comes to, you know, doing a remote SSH on different machines. And th that's the point where I really use Tmux. For my personal Mac, I really do not use Tmux that, that much. In fact, I do not have it installed as well. That's really bad. Um, so what are the cool things that you have is again, uh, a lot of times, for example, if you have to go to, um, okay. So if you want to go to, and as you can see, like if I'm, if I'm sourcing something as I press SOU and it's giving me auto complete. So this is another thing that I have configured. I'm using OMIS ZSH, which is really cool. And I'm using this plugin and the theme is really cool. I feel that, uh, having this thing will really make you super productive. Like I just press SOU and you know, it's giving me autocomplete stuff. If I have to uh, source some other script, I can press control R and it's having fuzzy search and I can press that source, not this file, but I want to source something else. 
and you know i have different commands past history and what are the different things that i have sourced and it's really handy you know when it comes to searching for older commands for example um, if i have to search for how you download a video from youtube i can simply you know search something like so it's coming right away it's youtube dl and something but if i want to see what are the past history commands that i have run with youtube dl i can simply press control r and it's giving me what are the different things like for example if you pass in capital f flag it will gives you the different you know audio video formats and then uh, the small f parameter can be used to particularly select the format quality that you want to download from youtube so yeah it's really cool um, i this is fuzzy search and fzf is the tool that you know allows us this awesome thing in which you can do something over here and it shows so desktop recharge youtube so i can i can simply you know write anything that i want to and it's basically showing me the results filtered out over here so this is how it works it's really cool i feel um, one one good thing about fzf is it has great integrations with history like as i'm saying control r and you know it's giving me the list of my past uh, commands that i've run and if i want to remember whatever is uh, like all the curl commands that i've run so c u r l and it's giving me the curl commands that i have used in the past so really cool in this sense um, one other thing that i also want to sh show with zs it is um, if i have to go to uh, the youtube folder that i have the youtube folder is having you know all the contents of my I i'll quickly show you so cd desktop project health not health but youtube so it's giving me the list of you know it's having so i generally have folders for all kinds of videos that i'm making uh, having said that instead of again and again doing this i can also do a lot of cool things for example right now i am in project in the home directory and now if i again want to go to the youtube directory i can do something like desktop rachit youtube so i am only writing dry and pressing tab and it expands so this is really cool feature that i have you know it kind of traverses the different directories and figures out what is the path that matches to it if there are multiple it will show you multiple for example um, if you if you see over here we have d for desktop downloads and documents so if i if i press do and i press tab it's showing me that okay i can auto complete it with documents and downloads so it's really cool in that sense um if if i press d e r and youtube again it will expand to desktop project youtube so um how to do this installation i think you can pretty much you know figure that out just do a random get, so basically if i have to remember that's also easy uh, i must have done git clone of you know uh, oh my zs so see this is really cool like i was just i just wanted to show you how do you install this Oh my ZSH it is the plugin that I'm using or the theme. And as you can see, this is the command that you have to use, sh minus C, and this will download the oh my ZSH, which is what I'm using. And I'm also using ZSH auto suggestions. Uh, and I'm also, you know, adding this plugin to my ZSH RC file, which allows me this auto suggestions and all those things. So really handy, right? I didn't have to, you know, open Chrome tab search or remember what was the command i was using i know that sometime in my past i had done something like that and i can simply you know do a fuzzy search which is so cool and as you can see it was able to show us um, how do you install this anyways i'm sure that all of you are pretty smart to do such things on your own um let's let's see what else can we do um one other thing that i want to share with you is like if i go to some temporary directory and uh, let's say i create a lot of files over here right so this is having all directories a dot t so this is having a lot of files now a dot txt b dot txt so on up to z dot txt and this is the way how you you know do that now one good thing is like let's say if you want to take uh, like if you want to move this to you know from f dot txt to f dot csv for example so it's quite easy you can do something like mv f dot txt and you can do f dot csv for example right or if you want to take a backup you can do something like bkp so this will do that movement of you know the file so now this is f.txt.bkp this is something that you generally do quite a lot so the shortcut for the same can be something like if you have a file a.txt right and if you want to move this to .bkp you can simply do mva.txt and then you can use these brackets you can say that .bkp 
what exactly it does is lsa star it moves the file from a.txt to a.vkp so this is how you can do it this is the syntax for that um, all i'm saying is hey i want to move this file and the next argument that i want to give is basically having the same prefix so i am kind of you know repeating the strings over here and i'm saying that use this prefix but for the second argument make sure that you know you add dot pkp so in fact if i you know if i use this and i just press tab not enter tab so this is what is happening behind the scenes exactly what i'm saying it decomposes into two strings the first string is a.txt the second string is a.txt but i'm saying that add this dot vkp to it so you can play around with this also like if you have dot one and then dot two so you can separate with commas what do you think will happen over here if i press tab so this becomes a.txt a.txt1 a.txt2 right of course this command does not make sense but i was just giving you an example of what this thing does Similarly, if you want to create a lot of files, this is how it. This, so this expands. So this expands to a dot txt, b dot txt, and so on. If I press tab, that's exactly what it's happening, right? So these are the few things uh, I wanted to share with you quickly. One other thing that I have seen is a lot of times um, you have to, you know, just take the last command and run it with sudo, right? You ran some command. It was saying that you know you did not have permissions, and now you want to rewrite or rerun the previous command but you want to add the pseudo permissions to that well you have a shortcut for that that so the double exclamation is basically the last command and if i simply do sudo double exclamations it's basically run the last command with sudo and if i press enter of course it's saying no such word because the last command were not valid but let's say lsa.txt and something like that so no such file or directory and if i do sudo so exactly it expands to sudo lsa.txt right so this is what I'm saying. Sometimes, you know, it has, so it's asking for a password right now. I really do not care, but yeah, I, I, I really feel that instead of, you know, going up, 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 and then searching your commands and then adding sudo, I feel that sudo double exclamation is really powerful. What else? Uh, a lot of times what happens is you have been working with Terminal quite a lot and you want to, you know, circle through the last arguments that you had. For example, um, if I have my history, if you want to circle to the last arguments that you have, right? these arguments you can simply do that by pressing escape dot so if i say echo and then escape dot so this is circling to the last commands that i have okay so this is really helpful in quite uh, like really great context um, if i have something like ls and escape dot so star.txt was the last argument i press escape dot again a.txt was the last argument to my second last command and so on i can circle through a list of last arguments and sometimes it's quite helpful one other good thing about uh, using i terminal is that it's a drop down terminal so for example i press option and space bar i have configured it that way it goes away it comes back it goes away it comes back right it's really handy whenever i am using chrome or i am doing some work and i you know suddenly need a terminal to do something or i want to do something in python so you know i don't have to go anywhere i simply press option tab, option space something fires up i say python 3 and i can you know do whatever i want over here so really handy sometimes and yeah uh, if you are wondering what was this crash directory so i have this um function wait so i have this function go to scratch which basically creates a directory in which i can do random stuff and once i'm done i can simply you know clean everything over here so this is something that i use quite a lot even in demos um, sometimes you know i have to explain something very trivial or give a demo of something so go to scratch and it creates a directory and it transfers me to that and now i can do different kind of stuff over here one good thing about uh, also is i have uh, git integrations so what that does is basically if i create a git repository it's saying that i am on master branch if i check out to let's say dev um dev feature something so now it's saying that i am on this branch so let's create some file so it's saying that there is one file and it's saying question mark because right now i have not told git to track this as soon as um, i add this file now it's plus one now this is something that is something is has been staged so if i do git status there is a new file and it has been staged right now if i create a new file of course it's in question mark one and if i um, so these are also kind of you know really useful in one second you can see okay you are in this branch you have some stage changes you have some files which are really not tracked 
in get and all those things are really cool if i remove b again that you know question mark goes away you still have something if you commit that that also goes away you have not no so basically you know really handy in understanding what is your current git state of the project that you're working on so yeah, these are the few things that i really wanted to share if you want to know the details as i have said um, the installation was really easy we had some command like this right so this installs oh my zsh um, it also installs the zsh auto suggestion and um, you also add that to the zsh rc file so this command you know kind of does the main stuff that you need the other things are basically i'm using fzf that you can install um again same git commands i feel i should have that git clone fzf again you are seeing so easy right so this is how you can do that so this will uh, install fzf in your uh, home directory and you can again configure fzf to basically have these autocomplete and fuzzy search features fzf is basically fuzzy search and it's really cool like all my you know if you want to see what are the git commands that i have used so git commit and it's showing me all different things that i have right so really handy to navigate into the history and especially when i'm giving demos things like this like how do you install and all those commands are right in front of you and it was so easy for me also it saved me a lot of time instead of going to chrome or going to my search history or googling again and again how do you do this how did i do it i can simply you know search in my command history and very easy with fzf so yeah, I hope this video was super useful. If you want more such productivity tips, let me know in comments and I'll see you in the next one. I want to give a shout out to their new handbook on coding career, which emphasizes on the non-coding part of being a successful software engineer. It has a bunch of collection of different kind of essays, you can say, which are related to your coding career. It talks about how you basically, when you are learning, you are a code newbie, then you do your first job hunt, then you become a junior developer, then you transition from junior to senior and so on. So it talks about different kinds of things that you are going to go through in your career life. Then it also navigates into beyond your coding career and goes about a bunch of different topics which are really detailed and written out. So it's basically a collection of a lot of advices on different topics uh, which come across when you uh, start your journey as a software developer and you know navigate your career path. So if this is something which interests you, instead of buying this one course, I would recommend you to try Educative Unlimited. Um, they have a generous campaign running for India, but if you are my audience, you can check the link in the description to enjoy further discount. If you enjoy short written content on software engineering, make sure to follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. For pictures, follow me on Instagram. And for programming memes, again on Instagram with the account I can't name variables. That's pretty much about it guys. I will see you in the next one. Till then, happy coding. Bye-bye.